Joining us now, Jordan Musician. Welcome. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. You you seem very happy. Are you uh, in the middle of some exciting stuff right now with your I career? Am. Yeah, we have uh, a new record that I almost have finished. Um, so we have lots of new songs and I've been out kind of doing a little touring and uh, just kind of getting back to normal here. It's really nice. Right. It's nice. You described yourself as a storyteller musician and that you like to tell stories and sort of, I guess, showcase the story behind the music before you perform. That's not something that you can do easily over Zoom. Right. Yes. And I've tried. I've done quite a few live streams during uh, during the pandemic. And I at first it was really hard to get into. And then it, I, I had fun with it because you can still have some chat. There's a chat that you check in on and people are asking questions. And I did find I have more time to kind of tell stories. But it's not the same as playing for a live audience. Right. Nothing beats that. So right. it feels really good to be back playing for, for real people. <laughs> yeah. In person. In person. Yeah, like you're really there. This isn't a bot. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Who's is anybody even there? You don't know. <laughs> right. Um, so you also have some interesting projects on the go. You work with other musicians in, in, with regards to touring and uh, showcases. Yeah, we do a show every year called Tis the Season with uh, Maynard Morrison uh, and Bette McDonald, uh, Joe Way Jr. and Mary Collin Chisholm. Uh, we tour around uh, the Maritimes every December and uh, I put out a Christmas album um, because of all the songs I've written for that show. We've been doing it for about six years and uh, about five years in I realized I'm writing every year for this show. I have enough material for an album so we uh, recorded the Christmas album, and uh, we won an ECMA for it last year, which is was really exciting. Phenomenal. Yeah. What's the name of the album? Uh, Around the Fire. Around the Fire. Yeah. Jordan Musician. So yeah, check it out. People should be buying that, right? <laughs> tis, tis a good gift. Yeah, that's exactly. To give. Now, um, also, you do other, other types of uh, artist showcases, and how did you describe that? Uh, like storyteller, sort of. Like I do songwriter a lot of circles. Songwriter kind of? circles. I love doing those. I love the camaraderie of playing with other artists and uh, just going song for song, telling stories and uh, like house concert kind of. I really like that vibe where you know it's an intimate listening experience. You get to tell the full story. Uh, you know, and I've, and I've done my share of touring in loud bars till two in the morning, and as my I love that. That that's fun and it's in itself, but uh, I really like taking my time and doing these kind of showcasing the songwriter side of storytelling. What is the most surprising or engaging story when you tell the story of the song? Which one is that for you that always gets a reaction? Here's an odd one. I have a song called Boxes and it's about moving. And I wrote the song almost me and my wife were moving from a little apartment to a house that we bought in Sydney, Cape Breton uh, about five years ago and everything was packed up in boxes. We were sleeping on the living room floor. We had a moving van, and the day that we were supposed to get the key for our house, we found out that the people selling it had a little like infighting with their family, so like we didn't end up getting the keys that day. So we had a whole week where we we're just kind of like, we had everything packed up, we had no place to go. We we're in this like movers purgatory sort of thing, all dressed up, no place to go. And uh, I wrote this song um, just kind of to make my wife laugh about the situation. I'm looking around what's written on the boxes and just silly stuff that I didn't think anybody, I, I didn't think I'd perform the song and I played it for my wife and she got a chuckle out of it. And I played it uh, at a couple of shows and I got a really good reaction to it. And I, I thought that was odd because it's such a small personal story, but it seems like everybody can relate to stuff like that. So now upcoming projects, what do you have on the go? in the next year plus because you kind of have to look that far ahead as a absolutely as an artist yeah i found over the pandemic we were thinking when things came back to normal you're only really booking a couple months out because you're not uncertain of everything and now that we're we feel like we're back to normal i have to start thinking year term goals so you're right about that um but i have a new album that which will be my fourth studio album um, that's almost finished, ready to go. We have half the songs recorded. We're going to go in the studio and finish it up. So I'm going to put that out. And with that, we'll do some touring. Uh, I'll do Tis the Season again uh, this December. And uh, lining up some festivals, even for next summer. Like we're starting to 
both for next summer before this summer it's wild how everything works and uh so yeah i'm just kind of forward thinking and keep on writing and keep on playing so when you tour where are you going are you staying in atlantic canada canada or are you going overseas where do you take your show uh mainly the maritimes i find there's so many places to play in the maritimes that you can just do the circuit it will take you the whole summer to get around um but also i'll play in alberta which is odd but you're, you're playing for east coasters so it's almost like you're traveling across the country to play for your hometown <laughs> so i have a really good time doing that and i usually go out uh once or twice a year just to play uh, out there for some friends that have been living out there yeah so any gigs planned for say winter 2022 uh i do have i'm gonna head back out to alberta um we'll be on the road with tis a season and uh yeah other than that there's a few things up in the air and we're hoping to lock it down but it's exciting i feel like a lot of the venues are making up for lost time and so there's a real like excitement in the industry i find where there's lots going on <laughs> with regard to performing now uh, with more appreciative audiences uh, what's the like are they rapacious to to just like yes perform for me <laughs> yeah it's i've missed you it, it's been a wonderful experience like the first couple of gigs back were almost emotional because like everybody's been missing music so much in live performance and the artists need the audience and vice versa so it's such a nice uh feeling to get back at it and people yeah people are excited uh, it's hard to end a show now. People just want to keep it going all night. <laughs> and do you use social media as a way to expand your uh, listenership or do they find you? Like, you know. I, I aim to do that. I aim to garner some new um, followers on, online. Um, but it's funny, it works a whole, there's a whole list of ways that you can kind of get people to listen in, um, you know, just by touring, going to places and uh, venues that people there's a lot of venues that will check out an artist even if they hadn't heard of them if they you know respect whoever's curating the shows right so a lot of that i love going to you know new bars and stuff and different venues that people take a chance on you and once they come in hopefully they like it and then mm -hmm. next time you come around they come out with a few friends and you just got to keep plugging away doing the grind right doing the grind Do, there's no other doing way the to grind do it. and the time <laughs> yeah if people want to find you on social media, what's the be what's the account you want to drive everybody to? I would say uh, my Instagram account, Jordan Musician Music. Uh, that's where I do most of my posting. And I'll, if I have any shows coming up, I'll post uh, posters for that, and uh, you know, a little some video stuff here and there, and nice. links to my website. I'm following you now, by the way. All right, on. thank awesome. you. Awesome, thank you. Uh, the song you're going to perform for us today? Yes, it's uh, called "The Good Old Days That Haven't Happened Yet." Somewhat of an oxymoron, the title. But uh, I wrote this song during the pandemic when I wasn't exactly inspired to write. You know, it was kind of a, a dark time for artists and it just was hard to be hopeful and, you know, write uplifting songs. So I thought, I'll write some songs about the past. I'll just do some reflecting and take, uh, do that with my free time. But then by doing that, I also kind of felt like that's kind of negative to think that, like, I hate the when people kind of, uh, they think the best times are behind them, the good old days sort of thing. And that, right. So that's why I took a twist on that. I thought, well, let's write a song about, you know, all the good times ahead. Instead, we're still making memories, the good old days that haven't happened yet. Yeah. We're only guaranteed now. Exactly. Thank <laughs> yeah. you, Jordan. Thank you very much. They say in this lifetime is of the essence And youth is wasted on the young But I ain't gonna cry about how cruel this world can be But I know the best is yet to come I don't want to be the guy at the bar Sitting next to Springsteen Pining for those long lost glory days but If you want to paint this town tonight The stage is set 
I'll drink to the good old days that haven't happened yet. The good old days that haven't happened yet. With my sweetheart Under the stars Beneath the pine I fell for her And I keep falling Deeper still Cause true love Ages like the vine Wine And my girl Don't despise The lines around my Along with some gray hairs, our love will grow. In a beautiful sunrise, it ain't got nothing on a sunset. Well, here's to the good old days that haven't happened yet. The good old days that haven't happened yet. Now, Mallory Johnson. Welcome, Mallory. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, we're delighted to have you here. You are certainly no stranger to the East Coast Music Awards, having mm-hmm. won yourself in the past. Country songwriting? Country recording Free of the, of the year. year. Yeah, it. yeah, in 2019. Yeah, and it's pretty amazing. That you've been doing this for a very long time. A very long time. I think I was 11 years old when I the first song that I was a part of writing, we went into the studio and recorded it, got in a van, toured the country. That was my family van, the Cormiers, and uh, here we are, now I'm doing country music. <laughs> ECMA, multiple uh, music N- N- Newfoundland mm-hmm. awards, like five times at least. Five times as a solo artist, a uh, few more times, a few wins with uh, with the family band as well. Yeah. So being on stage accepting awards is uh, as familiar as performing. You, you know what, as familiar as it is, it's always it always catches me by surprise, and I never prepare. Um, I always leave the stage completely forgetting every single thing I said. I believe last night after the video award, I didn't even thank my family. <laughs> so I got off stage. I was like, great. The whole table that was there to see me, I did not thank one of those people. <laughs> I'm sure that they know. They yeah. know that you, exactly. So now you are in. You are a Newfoundlander. Mm-hmm based now in Nashville. That's right. I'm going to say that that's probably the most perfect mix because, I mean, Newfoundland is such a musical part of mm-hmm. this country. Nashville is the home for songwriters. It is. So it is. are you with your people? 
I am with my people. Honestly, it's it's funny. When I first moved to Nashville, all the Canadians kind of gravitate towards each other. We bond over similar things and like immigration, how to get our work visas. <laughs> right. um, but no, it's been it's been amazing and the support system has been so beautiful. I actually have family just outside of Nashville from Newfoundland as well. So when I first moved down there, I kind of crashed on their couch for a bit looking for an apartment. And it's been I gotta say, kind of an easy transition because knowing people there and it's easy to make friends. It's a transplant city, so everybody's kind of coming from somewhere, so everyone kind of relates to the process. So, but still, though, you know, you're competing with. I mean, it's arguably the songwriting yeah. mecca, at least in North America, mm -hmm. for our music on this side of the planet. Of so. Course you are competing it's like going to hollywood and trying to be a tv star you are competing with everybody so yeah that, is that not daunting it definitely is yeah you could definitely say competing um on one side of it but the other side it kind of forces you to grow and be better it's good to be the small fish in a very big pond so it can be equally motivating um, i know when i go see a song right around and i'm seeing hit writers i just want to go home and write a song that's just how i feel i don't get discouraged i get oh my gosh i want to do this i need to better myself and I always like being the worst writer in the room because that's how you learn. So it's it's a very exciting process and I think it's important to become a better artist and a writer. And it's leading you into some amazing territory. Yeah. You you're you're not just songwriting and performing, you're producing. What 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 are what is the is there a limit to what you're going to embrace as far as opportunity? I hope not. Trying to reach those Dolly Parton standards. <laughs> she does everything. She has a new perfume now, for goodness sake. So, well, um, how can you not love Dolly? I know she's my, apart from my mom. Dolly's my number one. So yeah, yeah she's a big inspiration for me, and uh, I like having kind of like dipping my toes in every part of the creative process and kind of being on the production side and giving that kind of input. Um, it's just so rewarding when the project is out because you kind of you can say I put so much work into that on all sides and uh, it's just really special. And you bring up Dolly Parton and mm -hmm. you have like a one degree or uh, I believe two degrees of separation yeah. between you and Dolly. Tell yeah. us about how Dolly Parton's um, experience is going to be part of your experience. Oh my gosh. Well, as I just said, I'm obsessed with Dolly Parton. I grew up singing Coat of Many Colors because my mom used to sing that on stage all the time. Actually, every time I cover that song on my live show, I bring my mom up and we sing that song together and she steals the show. It's <laughs> fine. Uh, but so Dolly, her producer, Kent Wells, and her, her band leader, her lead guitar player, is my producer as well. For the so, new album. For the new record. Yeah, that's going to be out, I think, in the, in the fall. Yeah, 2022. Wow. That's the plan. Yeah. So, and are, do you have like, so the process for those of us mm -hmm. who are not songwriters and not making albums, mm -hmm. it seems so mystical. Do you have like reams and reams of songs and then you have to whittle it down? Yes. Yeah. How do you do that? Because uh, they're help. all your babies. <laughs> they're all they your all, babies. It's, and it's really hard because you are attached to those songs for different reasons. And sometimes what I think is a really great song for my own personal reason might not be the best choice commercially or what a marketing team might decide to do. So it's really hard to kind of separate, you know, what would be the best as a collection to be able to release for a project. So um, definitely with a lot of help, I'd run by a lot of songs through other writers, my family, um, my band leader, who you'll see in this performance, he's playing with me, um, my producer, my management team, we all kind of run these songs by each other and kind of say, okay, let's make sure we're not putting too many songs with the same kind of theme or um, the same kind of melodies or the same kind of, you know, instrumentation. So um, it's definitely a long, daunting process, like you said. <laughs> well, and I would think, you know, I'm, I've been in the periphery of the entertainment business for a really long time mm -hmm. and I have watched it change tremendously. So I look at somebody like yourself who is getting ready to launch a new album, mm -hmm. get in, go in the studio, do some amazing things. And yet the old school way of doing it as far as promotion and getting that your music heard has changed. It's changed because of social media. Mm -hmm. Before all things went through a record rep, which were then put onto a radio station, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. That's not necessarily the case anymore. So does that not change the way you write, change the way you select which songs go in? Yeah, I definitely think that that plays a part. Uh, songwriting though, I mean, a lot of people, you know, if you're chasing radio, there's a certain thing they're looking for, but 
I always think that if you chase what's already there, you're already behind. So I think the most important thing is to be authentic as an artist and honest and in our story. And that's what people relate to, because if you don't believe what you're writing, the audience won't. And it's easy to see through that on social media, even though it's through a screen. Uh, but yeah, this whole business now, it's kind of like a catch-22. It's very different, like you said, to how it used to be. I find you need to be a developed artist before people even look twice at you. You have to sell the tickets before an agent will take you on so you can sell more tickets. So it's, yeah, it's quite different, but it's, it's cool. There's a lot of beautiful things about it too. Social media brings a lot of free marketing, of course, right. and it's so easy to reach people the other sides of the world that you wouldn't have been able to before. So it's ever changing, which is awesome. And I think independent artists are kind of getting their foot in the door in, in bigger, better ways than they were able to in the past. So it's exciting. Change is exciting. Change is exciting. Mm. Being adaptable, yes. obviously. Yeah, for sure. And I'm ready to embrace the new technologies, the new ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. uh, with that said, it, what what in the in the distance? If you were to say, well, this is my dream collaboration, this is the kind of project I want to do, what, what, what's ahead for Mallory Johnson long term? Oh, I'd love to collaborate with Dolly Parton. <laughs> I need to get I on that with my producer and be like, can you make this happen? If you do, uh, can you tell her that Jolene is my favorite song of right? all time? I will. Okay, I will. Thank you. That's, that's a pretty fantastic song. Right? Next to Code of Many Colors. Right. Um, yeah, no, I, well, this project I'm doing now, I feel like is, is very me. Uh, I was a co writer on every single song on this record. Uh, like I said, I got to work with Kent Wells, who's been absolutely amazing. Some of my dream session players, uh, Rob McNelly's on there. I got to write a song with Carolyn Don Johnson. She's singing on the album. She's a hero of mine. Uh, Charlie Worsham is singing on a couple songs. So uh, there's a lot of amazing, amazing musicians involved. Not in to project. mention the fact that Kelly Loader is also yes. part of this album. Kelly is one of my best friends and we wrote a song on the record. I'm so excited for everybody to hear it. Can you tell us about the song you're, you are going to perform? I would love to tell you about this song. So Wise Woman is a song I'm going to sing. And it's a song that I wrote with two very, very dear friends of mine, Julie and Carly Kennedy of Twin Kennedy. They're a sister duo from BC originally, but they're located in Nashville as well. And we get to hear it now. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Mallory. Thank you so much for having me.
with a price And you know I'm right If I knew then what I know now Well, I wouldn't stand here in that line I'd be standing out I'd sit pretty at the head of the table I'd be a lady leading the way So another girl like me wouldn't have to wait on time No girl should have 